Karen Virtual, Creative Katie here. Welcome to my channel, Mixpedia Creations. Take time to hit the subscribe button. And when you click on the bell, you can choose the option to be notified as soon as I upload. That way you won't miss any videos. Today we have a video in the 12 Days of Christmas series. If you wish to support my channel, you can do so by shopping my Amazon influencer links or donating directly through PayPal link. Both of these links can be found in the description box below. Thank you so much for all your support. Okay, so this is a 10 by 20 canvas and I am putting color on it and I'm trying not to put it at an angle because I tend to always kind of go at an angle. And I'm using some of these luscious bright colors and I'm hoping that when I put them next to each other, I want them to blend. I know what's going to happen. That orange and the deep violet is, are going to make this rosy color. The quinacridone magenta and the yellow make this golden orangey color that's a little different than the orange that I'm putting on there. Um, the deep violet with the blue is going to make a purpley color. The magenta and the deep violet makes another shade. So then you have, you know, the five or six colors that you've used, but also all the other colors and shades. And that's a very easy way of building interest into your canvas. Mixing those colors have some fun with them. If you don't want to do it on a canvas like I'm doing it, you know, do it on a piece of paper ahead of time and say, okay, I want to see how this color and this color works when it's wet. This blue with the magenta makes a purple. The blue with the deep violet makes a different purple. The blue with the yellow is going to make green. If you... If you're doing this on a canvas and you mix two colors and it kind of goes eh, it doesn't look the greatest, easy peasy, let it dry and then put different colors on top once it's dry or take a baby wipe and wipe it off and clear it up. You can go either way, but once it's dry, you can put layers on top of it or paint it out with gesso if you, if you need to do that. So I'm just putting colors on here. Now, while I'm doing a 10 by 20 inch canvas here, this canvas, the ideas that I'm using here, you can do on any size. And in fact, for the longest time, when I started art journaling and doing mixed media, I did very small pieces. And that's where I built confidence and built up skills and learned things along the way. And then now I can use it on a canvas. But I'm three and a half, almost four years into this mixed media art journaling journey that I'm in. It's also easier to do, I find, on a hard surface, so in an art journal page or on a canvas board. Canvases have some gives, so when it comes to stamping and, and everything, it's just different. So here you see I'm mixing the yellow and the blue deliberately to make that green color. I have not added green onto this, but I do have green. Now, when I started this canvas, I had a couple, two, three ideas of what I was going to do on the canvas. And, you know, I didn't know exactly which one I was going to choose. And I probably still didn't at this point. I just said, you know what, I'm just going to throw a lot, get a lot of color. So here I've moved after it's completely dry. I've moved to the second stage and I'm using a series of stencils, different size and um you know, some are larger patterns, some are smaller. And I'm using those same colors that are underneath the first color. Now this stencil, I actually cut out the middle part because I've always, I love using this center part. And instead of masking it off all the time, I thought, oh, I'm just gonna cut it out. And the other part, I've never really used a whole lot. And I don't know that I've ever used this stencil as a whole. And even here with this part, I'm just using part of that center flower. So I grab this other, this outside of this stencil and I use a go around the ring with this Prussian blue. 
And I absolutely love it. I this these patterns, the shapes, even in that curve that's there. I'm loving how that's looking. The Prussian blue must have color in my book. It goes with every other color that I have in this canvas. Don't worry if you, you know, even if you have, um, you don't have all the colors in the same kind of paint, you don't need it. It could be craft paint, it could be Liquitex Basic, it could be Artist Loft, it could be a mixture of everything under, under the sun. Use what you have. Most of the things you can get it to work. So I'm just loving that boldness of that pattern from that stencil. Now I'm using the Crafters Workshop Stitch Start. Links to all of these stencils will be in the description box below. And I just to thank people for shopping through my Amazon links. I do get a small percentage, so I'm, I'm very, very thankful for your support in that matter. Check your prices. I do try to get the lowest price, but things change. So save those crafting dollars. This one is mini parasol. I would love to get this one in a bigger pat, a bigger size. I love this. I see snowflakes. And right about now I've decided that I'm going to use the focal point of mittens. And so that's kind of why I chose the snowflake pattern. This one's called peacock pattern for obvious reasons. Love this stencil. And, you know, I'm putting it on. And you don't have to put all four parts. You can just put a little bit of it. Pick and choose what part of the stencils you want. And on a situation like this, where I'm planning on using negative painting to paint out part of the background, you're not going to you know, you're only going to see a small point part of it. It's going to take on a new life. Adding a little gold through this Kaiser Craft stencil. My goal here is to use the stencils that I haven't used and get to know them and rediscover, rediscover them. As my art evolves, I can use stencils in a different way. And none of this, just like I applied the paint very freely, I am not being overly careful. I'm using makeup sponges to apply the paint. I'm dabbing off. I'm not pressing really hard, but I'm not overly concerned with getting a perfect stenciled imprint. So I'm loving the bright colors. And you can see that I have it sectioned off into eight pieces because at this time that's what I was going to do, that was going to be part of it. And I'm putting another color through the same stencil. And I tend to do that. I tend to pick one stencil and do at least two colors with it. And that just makes things work together and gives you that cohesive feel to your entire page. You don't want to introduce an element and just have it in one part of the canvas or a color. You want it in several places. If you do make a mistake, quick with the baby wipe and you can get that off. So I went online and found a pattern for mittens and I made myself a little cutout template with this. You can cut it out of plastic if you want something that's permanent. And I figured out how I want them and which mitten is going to overlap which one. And I'm just tracing it out with my a white Stabilo All Pencil. And the reason I chose, well, actually I thought choosing white was a mistake because I was planning on making the back, painting out the background black or just shading it with a dark, with a black or a dark blue. And I'm thinking, oh, I shouldn't have done white here because it's going to affect the, um, the paint. 
And then I decided that I'm going to paint out the background white. I tr actually off camera, I tried it with the painting it out black. I did not like it. And I thought, you know what? I've got these bright, bold colors. I am going to use white. Now, the reason I tend not to paint out the background, do negative painting with white, is because you do see so much coming through and it's hard to get it opaque white. But stick with me because I do have a solution later on that worked really well. It's the first time ever I, I even thought to do it. It worked really well. But here, what I'm doing, I'm knowing full well I am going to have to come back and do at least one more, probably two more layers. I'm thinning the white paint. I don't want it to I don't want to put it on too thick because it gets kind of gloopy and, and globby and uneven. And I want the background here to be fairly smooth. Now the bottom part is already dry, so I'm kind of going over it, and you can see as soon as I go over it, it becomes brighter, whiter, right? Now that's a personal choice. Sometimes I've seen people do it and they put on a very thinned out um, white. They put glazing mixture or something in it to even thin it out even more. And it's very transparent and you can definitely see all the pattern under, underneath. And I like the effect. For me, I tend to go where I want it to be opaque. I want it to cover it, cover the background pretty fully. I am using an angle brush. And every once in a while, I'm not sure if you if you can see it, I do take my fingers and kind of rub, rub out or smooth out the paint a little bit because I don't want ridges and I don't want brush marks. At this point, I'm still thinking that I'm going to be drawing the boxes around the um, each section, the eight sections that you saw. So I'm not overly concerned that it's brighter, whiter in those areas because I'm thinking, oh, I'm going to draw a line through there. So that won't matter. I will camouflage that. There are many times with this canvas that I didn't know what the next step was going to be. So, you know, I decided, and I'm not even sure why I got this idea. I thought I'm going to put the templates back on and I'm using a makeup sponge with white paint and I'm sponging on the next coat. What this does, no brush marks. And I got a very nice finish on this. So I definitely will be using this again. And you can see the difference. Now, lots of this, because I'm doing it again and again and again for a fairly large size canvas, I did off camera. You don't need to watch me paint the whole canvas out white. So now I have a snowflake stamp and I picked two metallic paints. These are both Artist Loft. There's cobalt blue on the top, which is more teal to me, and metallic blue on the bottom and I'm stamping these snowflakes everywhere but loose. And right about now I'm thinking, you know, it kind of looks odd. I'm kind of avoiding the mittens because I don't want it on. So I decide, hey, what if I make a mask for all these mittens? So I quickly trace out a couple times and cut, you know, multiple layers. And this allows me to stamp on top of the mask so that it looks like the snowflake is half behind the mittens. And I'm just adding more and more, mixing the blue and the teal and the cobalt and just covering it. Now this will also mask any of the texture or pattern that will peek through the white if it wasn't dark enough. And in a minute, I, you're going to see me splatter. So that's another thing that I found that I've discovered doing an art journal page one other time with the white, when you splatter on or stamp on top of the white, it doesn't have to be so terribly perfect. And for me, that was important. So here you see me splattering and I left the masks on.
And I'm just loving how bright these bright colors really pop on this very icy, snowy background. So what I'm doing here is I am used doing the float technique, floating acrylics, and I'm doing that to shade and highlight on the mittens. And I start with, um, oh, Payne's Gray. And then I move to a combination of Payne's Gray and Prussian Blue. I wanted more of that blue for that icy feel. So uh, right now I'm shading, doing it, doing the dark on the inside of the mitten. And again, you can, you know, you go from one place to another and you come back and you apply layers and build up depth of color over time. And you have to let it dry if you're going to intersect. If it doesn't go on right, I just use a Q-tip to clean up the area. And I find the Prussian blue, it works so well with all the colors that are in here. It complements them all. It looks good with the green, it looks good with the orange, the blues, the teals, the magenta. It just, it becomes almost a neutral. And with the shading, I'm adding some of the detailing in. So now I'm applying white and I'm thinking about, you know, saying, okay, where should I be putting the highlights? You know, where's the light source? And that works great, except at some point in time, I had turned the canvas upside down. So obviously the light source is opposite and I got myself all confused. So I didn't really follow the rules of, of that. I just kind of kept working till it looked good and I was consistent on each one. See, there's where my canvas was upside down and I lost track of it. So I'm just adding those details. This would make a cute five by seven. You can just do one set of mittens or an eight by 10, have four sets of mittens. It doesn't have to be this huge canvas that you see here. You could also make larger mittens. So now I'm shading on the outside because I want that icy blue color to frame each of the mittens and kind of shade them. It's like these mittens are on the snowbank outside and they're casting a shadow behind them. Then I decide that I'm going to paint the edges the Prussian blue color. Now, had I known that I was going to do this, I wouldn't have worried about painting the, the colors, the first layer of colors, but I didn't know. Now I'm using the fine liner that's filled with watered down Liquitex Basics white, and I'm just doing the dash. It seems to fit this, the feel of what I've done here, then the mittens. And if you don't like it, you can get rid of it with a baby wipe fairly quickly. Thank you so much for watching my video and for subscribing to my channel. Thank you for your support, whether you shop through my Amazon links or want to make a donation through the PayPal thing if you like my channel. The monies that I get from there go back into my art and the making of more videos. Leave a comment, share this video with your creative friends, and as always, I'll see you next time.